This is Diagnostic Test Validation Part 1, Sensitivity and Specificity. These are really important terms for evidence-based practice, and the purpose of this tutorial is to demonstrate what they are, and also to cover some of the important limitations. So let's say we've developed a new diagnostic test, and we want to validate this test. What we could do is assemble a validation sample. In this case, let's say we have 100 people, and 50 people on top have a disease, and 50 people on the bottom do not have a disease. What we would do is set up a 2x2 two two table, and I like to use uh, to put the tests into the rows and put disease status in the columns, but you could do it any way you like, it doesn't really matter. Um, and in this case, we said we had 50 people with a disease, and we have 50 people without the disease. Back to our validation sample. So let's look at the people on top. That's the 50 people with the disease. Let's say when we applied our diagnostic test that 40 of them tested positive. So they're outlined in red. Well, 40 out of 50 people with the disease tested positive. That's our estimate of sensitivity. That's all sensitivity is. So if we look at our two by two table here, we have 40 people who had the disease tested positive out of 50. So sensitivity equals the probability that you will test positive given that you have a disease. And in this case, it's 40 out of 50 people and 80%. So our estimate of sensitivity is 80%. Sensitivity can also be thought of as the true positive rate. Let's look at the remaining 10 people with the disease in our sample and say they all tested negative. So in this case, you have 10 people with the disease testing negative. These subjects would be considered false negatives. So sensitivity can also be considered the ratio of true positives to true positives plus false negatives. Let's go back to our validation sample and let's look at the bottom this time. On the bottom, we have 50 people who do not have the disease. And let's say 35 of them tested negative. Well, 35 negative tests out of the 50 people without the disease is our estimate of specificity. So look at our 2x2 two two table. We have 35 people without the disease test negative out of 50. So specificity is the probability you will test negative given that you do not have a disease. And in this case, we have 35 out of 50 people. So our estimate is 70%. Specificity can also be thought of as the true negative rate. Now, 15 of remaining people who did not have a disease tested positive. And those 15 people will be considered false positives. So specificity can also be thought of as the ratio between true negatives over true negatives plus false positives. So that's all sensitivity and specificity are. Uh, computationally, they're pretty simple, but the application is a little bit more nuanced. The first thing we need to remember in applying these concepts is that we absolutely need both of them together. You cannot evaluate sensitivity without looking at specificity, and you cannot look at specificity without evaluating sensitivity as well. The two measures always must be evaluated together for the following reasons. Let's go back to our sample. So of the 50 people with the disease on top, we had 40 test positive and we had 10 test negative. So sensitivity was 80%, which is not bad, not great, but not bad. Let's look at the bottom. Let's say everyone without the disease also tested positive. Well, in that case, our sensitivity is actually still the same. 40 out of the 50 people with the disease tested positive. Sensitivity is 80%. The problem in this case is specificity. 
you had zero of the people without the disease testing negative out of 50. So specificity is actually zero. And so this would not be a good test to use. Let's go back to our sample again. And on the bottom, we had 50 people without the disease. 35 of them tested negative and 15 of them tested positive. Let's say everyone who actually had the disease tested negative. Well, specificity is still 70%, but our sensitivity in that case is 0 out of 50, which would be 0. So you always need both sensitivity and specificity if you are going to look at a diagnostic test. Sensitivity is actually good for ruling out, and specificity is actually good for ruling in. We will cover that in our third tutorial, Spin and Snap. Now, aside from needing both, there are other very important limitations associated with these measures that we need to cover. And in biostatistics, there is, there is no such thing as a free lunch, ever. Everything always has very important limitations that are often overlooked. The first important limitation has to do with our validation study. In order to compare test results to disease status, you need an accurate measure of disease status. And we know that for some conditions and diseases, we actually have a good gold standard test. But for other conditions, we don't have a good gold standard test. And it's hard to compare test results to actual disease status because determining actual disease status is very difficult. So that's a really important limitation. Another limitation is related to precision. So our estimate of sensitivity for this test was 80%, and our estimate of specificity was 70%. But those are just estimates. And if we were to use these tests in the real world, we'd be better off interpreting the confidence intervals. So the confidence interval for our sensitivity estimate is 66 to 90%. So this means that with only 100 people in our validation sample, our interval is fairly broad, and if we're using this test out there in the real world among similar patients, we would expect the sensitivity uh, percentage of somewhere between 66% to 90%. Specificity also has a fairly broad confidence interval in this case. If we're using this test out there in the real world, we would expect the specificity um, level of somewhere between 55% to 82%. So that's fairly broad. Another thing is that if we were to run different studies, we would hope that both the point estimates would be similar and the interval estimates would be similar from study to study. But this is often not the case. Uh, there are variations in test validation studies for the same test based on either the lab that's doing the test or the examiner that's applying the test or the characteristics of the people that are getting the test. So you often see that interval estimates and point estimates vary broadly from study to study. So a good thing to do to mitigate some of these limitations is to use estimates from meta-analyses, which pull the results from many, many studies and give you much better precision and accurate estimation. So if you look at a diagnostic test, always look first to see if there's a meta-analysis that have pulled the results of several validation studies. Another important limitation relates to prevalence. If you look there in the first column, the number of true positives, people with the disease, and false negatives, people also with the disease but tested negative, the total of those over the number of people in our total sample is actually the prevalence rate of the disease in our sample. In this case, our prevalence rate is 50%. Now, if the prevalence rate goes down quite a bit, we'd expect the ratio of true positives to false negatives to stay similar or stay the same. But the numbers of both of them would go down relative to the people in the next column. So in this case, you could have a test that's highly sensitive and even highly specific as well but yet still yield more false positives than true positives. 
Same thing with a highly specific test in a sample with a very high disease prevalence. You could actually get more false negatives than true negatives. So we will cover this in our tutorial on positive and negative predictive values. But understand that this is a very important limitation of sensitivity and specificity. You could be dealing with a test that has very good properties, but still more of the positive results you get could be false positives as opposed to true positives. And finally, one of the most important limitations to consider is the nature of the measures themselves. Sensitivity, we said, was the probability that you will test positive given that you have the disease in question. Well, think about what you're trying to do in the clinic. You're not really trying to determine test status based on whether someone has a disease. What you're looking for is actually the reverse. You want to know if someone has a disease given that they've tested positive. That's actually the positive predictive value. Now that measure is important to consider, but that measure also has important limitations as well. And we'll cover that in tutorial three. Just understand that what you're looking at with sensitivity and specificity are actually the reverse of what you may think that you are looking at in clinical scenarios. For specificity, the same limitation applies. We said that specificity was the probability that you will test negative given that you do not have a disease. And in clinic, you're actually looking to determine whether someone does not have a disease given that they've tested negative because we do not know disease status in the clinic. If we did, there'd be no reason to apply the test at all. So specificity is also limited in this very important way. That's the end of this tutorial. And the next tutorial you should look at would be number two, likelihood ratios. I hope that you found this informative.